Zakah, obligatory alms. Among the different religions, legislations, and man-made systems of law, mankind does not know any method to combat poverty and satisfy man's basic needs like the system of zakah in Islam. Allah ordered us to fulfill his obligation in his saying and perform salah and give zakah. Zakah is one of the pillars of Islam. As the Prophet peace be upon him said, Islam is built on five pillars and mentioned as one of the pillars, paying zakah. Linguists have defined zakah as to grow, that is, in goodness, or to purify, or to bless. Zakah in the context of the sharia ah refers to a fixed amount of capital that is to be paid at a specific period of time to a certain group of people. And the scholars explained that the wisdom behind its obligation was that it purifies the soul and cleanses it of any stinginess, sins and misdeeds. Here we have Allah Almighty saying, Take sadaqah, that is charity, from their wealth in order to purify them and sanctify them with it and invoke Allah for them. Verily, your invocations are a source of security for them and Allah is the All-Hearer, the All-Knower. Similarly, it also cleanses and blesses their property. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Sadaqah does not decrease any property. Zakah is also a real test of one's obedience to the commands of Allah and of giving priority to loving Allah first over and above the love he has for his property. It is a support for the poor as well a matter which ensures the highest degree of solidarity in the Islamic society. But more important than all this, zakah is a way to attain Allah's mercy, and it is a condition for those who pay zakah to achieve victory. Allah Almighty says, And my mercy embraces all things, that I shall ordain for those who are pious and give zakah, and those who believe in our signs. And he also says, Verily, Allah will help those who help his cause. Truly Allah is the All-Strong, the Almighty. Those, meaning the Muslim rulers, who, if given power in the land by us, enjoin iqamat as-salah, that is to establish the prayer, and pay the zakah. The scholars have also informed us that zakah is a means to expiate sins. This is due to the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Sadaqah extinguishes misdeeds as water extinguishes fire. Who withholds his zakah due to stinginess, but not due to any denial of its obligation, zakah should be taken from him, but he is not considered as having become a disbeliever. This is in accordance with the Prophet's statement, peace and blessings be upon him, concerning the person withholding zakah. Afterwards, he will be shown his fate, either heaven or hell. If he had become a disbeliever, he would not have the chance of going to heaven. Such a person should have his zakah taken from him by force and he also receives some form of punishment. Concerning such a person, the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, Every owner of either gold or silver who does not pay his due will be called to account on the day of resurrection and plates of fire will be prepared for him. These plates are then heated over the raging flames of the hellfire, that is Jahannam, and are then used to burn his side, his forehead and his back. Whenever it becomes cold, it is all started over again. This happens on a day that measures 50,000 years until all the servants have been judged Afterwards, he will be shown his fate, either heaven or hell. Furthermore, while still alive, if one refuses point blank to pay zakah, he has to be fought until he succumbs to the order of Allah Almighty and pays zakah. Allah Almighty says, However, if they repent and perform salah and give zakah, then leave their way free. Verily, Allah is the oft-forgiving, most merciful. 
And as the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I have been ordered to wage war against men until they bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And observe salah and pay zakah. When they have done these, then their blood and property are safe from me. That is not to be touched. Except if the right of Islam is at stake and their judgment lies only with Allah. And we have Abu Bakr, the truthful, may Allah be pleased with him, who said after he became the caliph and some refused to pay zakah, I swear by Allah, I will continue to wage war against those who distinguish salah from zakah, because indeed zakah is a right that is to be deducted from a person's property. And by Allah, if they were to withhold a camel cord which they used to pay as zakah to the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, I will fight them for withholding it. Anybody who denies the obligation of zakah has become a disbeliever if he had been informed about its obligation, for the reason that he or she has belied Allah and his Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Zakah is not compulsory on anyone but a Muslim, as Allah does not accept the actions of a disbeliever. Similarly, it is not compulsory on anyone but a free person who possesses the nisab. The nisab is defined as a certain amount of property or wealth that must be owned before it becomes obligatory on the person to pay zakah. It is more than what is necessary for the basic needs of man, for example, feeding, clothing, shelter, etc. The nisab must also completely belong to a particular individual. So zakah is not paid from money or property that does not belong to a specific person. For example, money that was contributed towards building a mosque, an endowment set aside for the well-being of a community, or properties in the treasuries of welfare, or philanthropic organizations. And as well as this, the nisab has to be in the possession of the person for one complete lunar year. This is the case for currencies, merchandise, and cattle. As for plantations, fruits, minerals, and treasures, the lapse of a year is not a prerequisite. As Islam is very concerned about improving the state of the poor, it made it compulsory for the person to give his zakah as soon as it is due and forbid one to delay it except if he is forced to do so because of some necessity. This is because Allah the Exalted says, But pay the due thereof on the day of their harvest. Because Islamic legislation is also concerned for the poor, it allowed one to give out his zakah before it is due. And as a result of the mercy of Islam, it is permissible to send zakah from one country to another if the need arises. For example, when the other country is poorer than one's country, or the one who should give zakah has poor relatives in another country.